So, the auto covariance matrix function is the next part, and how is that different from a matrix formulation to the univariate formulation? The expectation here pretty much looks the same as in the univariate case. The main difference is that now everything's are vectors here. That also means that we need to take the transpose of one element to get a covariance matrix. You have a column vector here, and you have a row vector here when you're after transposing it, and then you get a covariance function at that point in time. That also means that, well, going forward backwards in time, which was before equivalent, so gamma of k was equal to gamma of minus k, now, since given this transpose in here, we will have to transpose to get to the negative time lag here. Now, in the bivariate case, just to see what you have more closely here, is that in the diagonal, you have the auto covariance structure with yourself, the uni univariate, and then the off diagonal, you have the cross co covariant, or often we will, when plotting it, we'll look at the correlation instead of the covariances, but talking about covariances, we don't need to normalize. Now, this part going forward and backwards in time, if you look at the lower left, element here, the cross correlation between gamma and state 2 and state 1, going forward in time k step is the same as from 1 to 2 and going backwards in time. So let me just exemplify that. So if you have a state and you look k step forward in time, and then you for the other state, then you do this at different time points, that's equivalent to take the other one as reference and go correspondingly backwards in time. That is what is the meaning of this part here. So, what do we need to do to, our, to represent this? We did this last week by plotting the covariance, or actually we plotted the autocorrelation structure um, of the univariate series, and then we also looked at the cross-correlation function for both positive and negative values. We did it, the cross-correlation we did in two ways, we did the cross correlation on its own, but then you need to do the correlation, all the correlations on your own as well, so you need to do at least three plots to do that. Correlation structure for auto correlation for process state one, for state two, and then the cross correlation function as well. But you can also do it in a matrix form just like this, which was the default for the ACF function in R. If you give it a, multi a bivariate system, then you have exactly the ACF in the diagonal of the univariate series, and then you have the cross correlation for positive lags in the upper diagonal and for negative lags in the below the diagonal. So that's the representation I prefer that you use. In particular, if you go to higher dimensional systems, it may be difficult to find your way through, whereas when you look at it as a matrix, you can see what is connected at what lag, and so forth. Now, as for the univariate case, I like to go through the theoretical structure, how to estimate things in the theoretical setting before doing things in practice, just so that we know a little bit more about what we're doing. So if you use the representation with phi coefficients here, phi 1 to 2 phi p for the autoregressive part, and Likewise, from theta 1 to theta q for the moving average part, and then we have a covariance structure, then we can calculate the theoretical autocovariance co matrix function. If we have a pure autoregressive model, then we can use a multivariate version of the dual Walker equations. I'll get back to that in a moment. And if you have a pure moving average model, well, then you take equation 565 from the book, and then you pretty much take all the univariate elements there, treat it all as matrices, keep track of what trans should be transposed and what not. The similar thing applies to the combined auto moving average models. It's just, you say, different equation numbers, but you can do the analog to what it did in the univariate case to get to equations and solutions in the multivariate case. And you can also find examples in the book and page 255 and the following pages. 
There's one case that I would like to just underline, as we mentioned before. That's the so-called multivariate autoregressive model, sometimes called a vector autoregressive model. It is the same thing, it's just two different names. But I mean, I'm sure many of you have seen many things before that one invented it, someone reinvented it, and they gave it different names. That happens all the time, it will happen again, I'm sure. So we can have the usual representation here, or the one where we kind of write things out with coefficients. And what I've done here is I moved everything but yt to the right hand side in order to be able to do the covariance structure that I'm going to do right now. So what I'm doing is as in the recipe, you have to take the state and then you have to multiply with the transpose of what you want to look at. So first let's just look at a time lag of zero to get the variance of this process. Now what I've done is I take yt and pre-multiply that by on the transpose of the process definition up here. So remembering that when I transpose a product, I take the elements, swap the order, and transpose each of the, of the elements. Now when I look at this, this is the variance of gamma zero. This is gamma, if take the expectation, I get gamma of minus one down to gamma of minus p with some coefficients on, and then I get the noise out here. So that was for the variance. Now there's one thing about the variance is symmetric. And when you look at this, I could, instead of inserting the process, I could have post multiplied by yt and kept the process untransposed. If I do that, I get a very similar expression. Basically what I have here is the transpose of what I have up there. And of course, since the variance is symmetric, it makes good sense that you can transpose all the parts in here and you get the same thing. Now, if we do it for other lags, I'll just do the general expression here for lag k, post multiplied by the transpose of the process up here. Now, what you have is then different coefficient uh, products out here where you have to care about what is the difference in time here. So from t minus k to t minus one, well, then you have k minus one steps forward in time. So you go forward, gamma of k minus one here is a positive number, whereas in the formulations up here, we have negative numbers in general. Now, at some point, you will subtract p, become later, greater than k, and then you will get back to negative numbers. So, and we have to keep in mind that you have negative numbers sometimes and positive numbers at other times when we get to the next slide. Because when we look at the model here, then we can write up all these equations. The first one represents the variance equation up here for determining the coefficients here up to order k. <coughs> and now here we see that we transpose what came from the previous slide. We have the gammas here are not transposed. We have the phi's on the right hand side but we have negative indices here. So we learned earlier on that when you have negative, in order to get to a positive, you also need to transpose it. So that is why you have these transposes and everything on the other side of the diagonal, the other triangle matrix here is transposed, whereas the lower is not transposed because you there you are already looking at positive lags in here. So we've done this for all the positive lags. These are the so-called multivariate dual walk equations that can be solved to get an estimate of the coefficients 